Hello guys, I got up first light and I've got to a real favourite location of mine. This here is possibly one of my favourite places to wild camp. But that is only in the right weather conditions. As you've seen from the walk-in, everything here coming off the high ground, it's just saturated. There's so much water running off the high tours and it's making its way down through the valleys to the rivers. Now, I'm here to have some breakfast in the woods and I'm also going to do a spot of archery. I haven't loosed an arrow since oh, the, the end of autumn. Um, it's been pretty much put in hibernation, my bow. Um, I do have another bow I'm going to craft myself, but the hazel bow I've got over there has done me absolutely proud and um, I just enjoy it so much. And as with everything, there's always that little special feeling or connection to it if you've actually made it with your own hands. And I'm sure a lot of you can possibly appreciate that. But I've got to get a fire going, I need to get a coffee, and uh, let's cook some breakfast. So, uh, yeah, weather conditions here, to be fair, um, it's not raining, but we've got a heavy mist coming in off the high ground, and as it's rolling through, the last part of the high ground where I'm sat, or where I am, and going down the valley, it's kind of turning into sort of like heavy vapour droplets. Everything's getting damp and wet, but it's still better than uh, straight sideways or downwards rain. So let's make this happen, let's get this fire going, and let's start cooking some breakfast. So this is actually my camping area, uh, my favourite camping area, and this is where I always pitch up. And that wall, I think I've mentioned it before, is the boundary between the high ground and where you go down into the lower parts of the valley. You can still see, even through the mist, we are high. We're halfway up over the, the moor, so we've got a fair bit of elevation, but... Uh, this is my admin space. I've got a ready-made big slab of granite, which is my table and seating area. Although, <laughs> I'm going to have to do something about the sheep poo. God knows why a sheep would want to stand on this granite block and do its business here. But it's rather inconvenient for me because, like I said, this is my table and where I'm going to eat from.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
you can just see the mist is lifting now. It's just a bit hanging around the top of the hills down there in the valley. But here, it's pretty much disappeared. It's going to be a nice day. It's absolutely stunning here. I actually love this location. I've unstrung my bow and I've picked up the range and um, I'm going to have one last cup of coffee just to soak in the atmosphere of this place and then I've got to make my way out of here. Right guys, looks like another sheep didn't make it through the winter but um, it wouldn't have been wasted because I can see fox tracks tracking along this uh, boundary so um, it obviously went, you know, nothing's wasted in nature. Um, yeah, I've got my last cup of coffee but um, what a fantastic morning to come out, you know, first light, come here it's still got that heavy mist, light is beginning to come through and now I've got sun trying to come through, the mist is lifting birds just totally resonating through this whole of this woodland and I've done some archery I really enjoyed that um, as you can see I've missed a few of the targets but by and large 85% of my um, um, you know eyed on targets uh, that I put, placed my aim at I was hitting the actual target and uh, when you hit the target you hear a massive boom thump and it goes straight through that bow is pulling at about 65 pounds um, fully jacked up um, I run it at 55 because quite simply I'm so in love with that bow I don't want to cause it any damage or overstress it um, till I make another one anyway and then that will probably be dusted cleaned and then racked and kept for you know Prosperity and I'll just look at it and remember and cherish the times I came and done this with it um, And it's fantastic because it's like stepping back in time because uh, That is a self-made bow from hazel um, It's not you uh, and a lot of the bows weren't you in reality um, For poorer people when they were practicing probably practiced on something like that themselves and indeed a father would have probably shaped and uh, You know made a bow like that for his son to get his first steps and eye in for target practice back in the day obviously the long bow is um, synonymous with uh, the war bow and what that did for the British armies it was a phenomenal weapon and it uh, pretty much accounted for a lot of victories but um, Cornish longbowmen there is actually written uh, reference to them from what I understand if my memory serves me right and they were quite renowned for their abilities with the uh, longbow and I do actually have a place nearby which has actually got the name which people the butt is in the end part of the name which technically uh, means it, it possibly was a longbow range for when men and boys had to go out and practice on a Sunday and it was law at one point that you had to do it to be ready to be called up for your country to um, go and fling a few arrows at the enemy whoever they may be but um, yeah I'm gonna drink this and uh, get out of here but Oh, breakfast in the woods and a bit of archery. What more could you want? Absolutely fantastic. Whoa. Coming up there, for every foot you put forward, half of the effort is put sliding back down. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of effort to get out of here. But I do have to make it happen. I can't stay here as much as I'd like to. And what a morning to come here and have breakfast in the woods do some archery I think I did say British um, earlier but it's English it is synonymous with the English army even though the Welsh and the Scottish would have used them as well but the English were quite renowned for how they used them tactically but um, in any case I could have uh, stepped back in time hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of years and if somebody from a long distant past one of my ancestors was to to be watching me now they would understand 
what what I was doing and and the level of skill that's needed to get good and what it was all for and the actual pleasure that can be driven just by putting a few arrows down range it's one of the simplest of pleasures that uh, you can derive from a piece of wood piece of string and a few feathers and a straight piece of wood for an arrow so yeah um, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself and um, I've got to make tracks and get out of here now so all that's left really for me to say is take care stay safe and I hope to catch you guys out on the trail and um, yeah let's see if I can get out of here without falling on falling on my ass because everything is absolutely so wet and I've got to go because I've come up well with everything in life if you come up you've got to go down so take care